Hey, everybody, it's John from The Hustle Daily Show. Before we get into the show today, did you know that HubSpot launched an AI chatbot that helps you build awesome campaigns at scale with just a few prompts? It's called Campaign Assistant, and it's a totally free to use AI tool made for marketers and business leaders who spend hours a day on content creation. Campaign Assistant will transform the way that you build marketing campaigns at scale. Craft personalized emails, ads, and landing pages in just a matter of minutes. Just pick the content type, add the key selling points, and let the AI take it from there. And the best part, it works seamlessly with all of HubSpot's marketing and sales tools to scale your output across email, social, and more. So AI your way into the most effective campaigns yet at HubSpot.com slash campaign dash assistant. Howdy, folks. It is Thursday, September 1st. I'm Jacob Cohen. Here with Juliet Benarila, and you are listening to the Hustle Daily Show. Today, we're going to be talking about the most expensive TV show ever, which is premiering later tonight, Eastern Time, I believe. When you look at this story, though, it represents much more than just a big budget show for Amazon, the company that made it. It represents a personal, lifelong passion project for Jeff Bezos and also a major showdown in the world of fantasy television. We are going to discuss it all. But before we get into that, let's take a quick look at what else is going on in the business and tech world. Let's get crack All right. First things first, Goats and Glory. That's the name of the U.S. Navy's esports team who's looking for new sailors to join in a bid to help the military's recruitment effort. How about that? The unit is considered a key part of the military strategy to connect with Gen Z. Interesting. Moving along, whoops, Crypto.com accidentally refunded an Australian customer around $7.2 million instead of the $68 or so they were supposed to refund them. The customer ended up using the money to buy a house, and the company is now freezing the funds and fighting them in court. Also in this space, Michael Saylor, the founder of MicroStrategy and a massive Bitcoin bull, is getting sued by the District of Columbia for tax fraud. Up next, T-Mobile is rolling out a new program where you can try out the company's network with unlimited data for three months for free using eSIM technology that allows you to activate a cell plan from a carrier without using a physical SIM card. How about that? Do you have T-Mobile? I do not. I have Google Fi. Oh, very interesting. Google Fi. Look at that. I have Verizon. Anyway, moving along, Walmart-owned Sam's Club is raising annual membership fees across its 600 stores for the first time in nine years from $45 to $50 for its base club memberships. Similarly, investors have speculated about Costco doing something similar. The last time Costco raised its fees was in June 2017, and it historically does so every five years or so, which would put it on track to do it this year or next. How about that? That will not make people happy. I can guarantee that. Yeah, but if you eat enough of their like dollar seventy five hot dog combos, right, you could make up the cost. That's true. That hasn't gone up in price ever. Mm-hmm. And in other news, Bed Bath and Beyond plans to close one hundred and fifty stores and lay off twenty percent of its corporate staff in a bid to cut costs. Also, NASA has rescheduled its Artemis One launch for Saturday, September third. The window opens at two seventeen p.m. Eastern time. All right. And with that, let's discuss The Lord of the Rings. All right. So Amazon Prime Video is a really interesting and you could say lucky streaming service because it's a media company that really is not in the business of making money necessarily, but it's really in the business of just making great content that they can use to increase the overall value of an Amazon Prime membership. And with Amazon's deep pockets, they can afford to make really sizable bets on content. And tonight, they are making possibly uh, the biggest bet in the video services history by releasing their take on The Lord of the Rings, an eight-episode show called Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power. Mm. Now, what's interesting about this is kind of a deeper story. It's a personal story that goes back all the way to Jeff Bezos' childhood. So get this, as a teen, a summer after working as a McDonald's fry cook, Jeff Bezos actually organized an educational summer camp for your kids. I think he was charging $600 okay. uh, for that, very lucrative even even back then. Mm-hmm. And part of this program 
was this required summer reading he put together. Uh, and he had a list of books that he was having these people read. On the list was The Lord of the Rings, which was a book he has said his grandfather inspired him to read originally. Those are really long for a summer camp, I must say. You think? Yeah, I think most adults can't even read that. (laughs) Yeah, I'm not really sure what he was (laughs) expecting of these kids. But anyway, years later, in 1994, of course, Bezos founded Amazon. And in 1999, the Lord of the Rings series was named Amazon customer's favorite book of the millennium. Fast forward to 2017. Amazon is a much larger business, obviously, and it announced it had won the novel's TV rights. At the time, it was kind of surprising because remember this, it was Amazon we're talking about, not Netflix, not HBO, right? Right. And tonight, some $715 million later, The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power is dropping on Prime Video. Now, that price tag represents the cost for both the rights, which were worth $250 million, and the production of the eight-episode season, which makes it easily the most expensive TV season ever. And also interesting to note, by the way, since published in 1954, the Lord of the Rings books have sold over 150 million copies. But get this, in 1969, Tolkien sold the movie rights to his series for just over $1 million. Wow. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, kind of lost out a little bit there, you might say. But yeah, so $715 million, it may sound like an inordinate sum of cash, and that's because it is. But the reality is, the cost equates to income from around 5.1 million Prime subscriptions, or just 0.15% of Amazon's $470 billion or so of revenue in 2021. Wow. So it sounds like a lot, but it's really not a lot for them. Also interesting here is how much of a real personal passion project this was for Bezos throughout the process. It's reported Bezos personally worked on the pitch for these rights, which included $250 $250 million for the rights, a commitment to multiple seasons, and cross promotions on Amazon for the Lord of the Rings books and merchandise. And it apparently significantly outweighed the cash and Roku goodie bags that Ted Zarados at Netflix apparently offered uh, Tolkien heirs and studio execs nice. who are shopping this deal. <laughs> Fast forward to this week on Tuesday night at the premiere, Bezos emphasized, you know, the responsibility and privilege, he said, that comes with working on something like Lord of the Rings. And I thought this was great. He also recalled a stern warning his son had given him after they landed this deal, which was, Dad, please don't f*** us up. <laughs> right. <laughs> and I feel like that's where, where you might have something to say because you follow the TV world more closely than I do. So what's your take on all this? Yeah, I mean, I haven't seen the show, obviously, and I haven't spent much time in the Lord of the Rings world in a in many, many years. But I do think when you have a property that has this huge built in fan base, it's it's a dangerous <laughs> balance because I've seen a lot of things come out in the last couple of years, reboots or, you know, adaptations that have never been done before. And I feel like fans have so they put so much into these. They're like, this better be exactly the way I imagined it in my head when I read this book when I was 14 or it's going to be a terrible adaptation. And then they get on Twitter and they're so mad. And then like you've got half of the people clamoring for more representation in these fantasy worlds, which (laughs) seems like it should be easy to do because these worlds do not exist. You can cast whoever you want. And then if you cast someone like I've, I've seen the other half, it's like, oh, this is too woke because there's not enough blonde eyed, yeah. <laughs> blonde haired, blue eyed people. Like you're never going to please every single fan. Right. I think if you do a pretty good job that sort of aligns closely with the author's intent, the way we've seen Netflix do with the Sandman, you're, you're probably going to do OK. But you never know. And it's a lot of money to spend on world building and then have it completely fail. And even with something like Game of Thrones, which had, you know, an amazing first several seasons, and then it was kind of just like a disastrous finale. Like no one talks about Game of Thrones or no one talked about Game of Thrones for years. And now all of a sudden House of the Dragon is coming back around and and HBO has a lot of work to do because it's got to win back over all those fans that sort of fell off. So I think it's hard to adapt a fantasy epic because you're never going to please anybody. And Unlike with the Sandman or Game of Thrones or some of these other projects, uh, Tolkien is not around to help you. So (laughs) 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 you really got to do it yourself. That's true. But, uh, you know, I guess with uh, about a billion dollar budget, you have a 
a good chance of doing at least okay. <laughs> yeah, I think the CGI dragons and stuff will, will probably look a little better than they did in, in, you know, season one of The Witcher, perhaps. So hopefully the budget helps. And bada bing, bada boom, that's going to do it for us today. Thanks for tuning in to the Hustle Daily Show. We're a proud part of the HubSpot Podcast Network. Our editor today is Ezra Trubiano. Our executive producer is Darren Clark. I'm Jacob Cohen here with Juliet Benarila. We've got a lot more tech and business coverage in our newsletter. If you're not subscribed, you can go get yourself subscribed at thehustle.co. Hope you have a terrific Thursday, and we'll see you tomorrow. Hey guys, if you listen to the Hustle Daily Show on Google Podcasts, we want to let you know that the option will no longer be available pretty soon. Google is sunsetting its podcast app sometime in early 2024 in favor of YouTube Music, and we want to give you a heads up before it's too late since that time's almost here. The Hustle Daily Show is available everywhere and anywhere that you listen to podcasts like Apple Podcasts and Spotify. If you're using YouTube Music, we are there as well. If you're an Android fan, there are plenty of apps like Overcast, Pocket Casts, Player FM, and more. So just search for us wherever you decide to listen to your favorite podcasts.